The last speaker is Dr. Zhe Jun Li. She is currently a postdoctoral fellow in the Department of Mechanical and Automation Engineering, the Chinese University of Hong Kong, where she also finished her PhD degree in 2019. Her bachelor degree was in chemical engineering from Tianjin University. Her research expertise is on redox flow battery and lithium sulfur battery. She has published several high impact papers in top journals such as Nature Energy and Advanced Materials. She received the Outstanding Thesis Award from the Faculty of Engineering, Chinese University of Hong Kong. Today, she's going to share with us her exciting work on energy storage using redox battery, uh, redox flow batteries and lithium sulfur batteries. Hello, everyone. I'm Zhe Jun Li from the Chinese University of Hong Kong. And now we are going to look at the materials design and mechanics investigation of advanced sulfur-based batteries. Owing to the greenhouse gas emissions, our planet is warming up rapidly, which leads to an increasing frequency of the extreme weather disasters. So what is the sources for CO2 emissions for the climate crisis? As is shown here, over 70% of the CO2 emissions come from the energy consumptions for industry, transportation, and residential buildings. However, we also have opportunities. The levelized cost of energy of solar and wind hit declining in the past decade to be competitive with conventional fossil fuels. Therefore, there is an urgent need to integrate these clean energies into future clean uh, electric grids and the decarbonization of transportation. However, their intrinsic instability and intermittency limits the grid penetration, uh, rendering energy storage system a critical enabler to fulfill this clean grid landscape. And among various energy storage technologies, batteries provide high design flexibility and play an increasingly important role in various applications. And currently, lithium ion batteries take 90% of the global battery market, but still suffers from challenges like low energy density, poor scalability, high cobalt cost, and concerns of their safety and the earth's contamination. Uh, sulfur, on the other hand, is one of the most earth abundant elements with ultra low price and high energy density, rendering sulfur based batteries a cost effective and sustainable alternative to conventional lithium ion. Therefore, our work focuses on resolving the challenges suffered by the sulfur based batteries in order to promote a sulfur powered energy storage landscape. So first, let's start with sulfur-based batteries for grid-scale application. The future clean grids needs long-duration energy storage, and why? And in this renewable generation plots in Germany, the typical discharge duration for lithium-ion batteries are only four to six hours, far from the demand to fill the energy gaps of tens to hundred hours uh, shown here. And using 10 times more cell packs are too expensive for the peak shaving. This is also the cases when extreme weather disasters happen. Therefore, long duration energy storage with discharge duration over 10 to 100 hours are highly desired to increase the penetration of the renewable eco economically and improve the security of the grids under the extreme weathers. And Reynolds flow batteries are one of such technologies with high design flexibility. As is shown here, the power of the system is decided by the cell stack, while the energy is determined by the volume of the electrolytes. Therefore, one only needs to add additional uh, amounts of electrolytes to for longer uh, durations. The commercialization of the most well-developed all vanadium flow battery are greatly challenged by their high capital cost and low energy density. However, polysulfide is promising nickelites for a flow system. We have first designed a polysulfide iodide rail flow battery with lower chemical cost, but higher energy density compared to vanadium flow system. In this work, we have demonstrated one of the highest energy density and reviewed the reversibility of both electrolytes for battery operation. However, polysulfide-based flow batteries are greatly challenged by the crossover and uncontrolled water migration through the commercial membrane. 
To deal with these long-lasting problems, we have further designed a charge-reinforced ion-selective membrane, which is CRIS, by simply coating a polymer-bonded carbon on the surface of membrane. This can effectively repel the crossover and mitigate the water migration. So first, the strong absorption ability of polysulfide and polyaldehyde in the mesoporous carbon layer lead to a strongly negatively charged surface of membrane, which can effectively repel the penetration of both ions and significantly reduce the self-discharge rate. In static cell, operated for 1,200 cycles in 2,000 hours, a negligible capacity decay was observed, which is equivalent to a shelf life of 15 years. And to specify, this is the most stable polysulfide-based system ever reported. We have further confirmed the scalability of the pre strategy in a skilled depth flow prototype. And over 80 days cycling, uh, no capacity decay was observed. And this unprecedented high stability is further related to the well-regulated electrolyte migration. From molecular level, we have applied the in-situ FTIR and solid CMR to show that the dynamic moment of water is better controlled in CRIS versus N17. And this can be further explained by a much smaller water cluster sizes in CRIS structure. And finally, our techno-economic analysis of the levelized cost of storage uh, further reveals that the crease enabled PSIB offering an economical pathway for long duration energy storage in future carbon-free electric grids. And now let's move on to see sulfur powered deca decarbonization of the transportation. And high energy density and safety are two critical requirements for batteries using electric vehicles. And since 19th century, uh, the energy density of batteries increased rapidly from lead acid to lithium ion. But it's still far from the demands for personal cars and let alone the heavy duty vehicles or aviation. Therefore, we always need new chemistry to further boost the energy density, like lithium sulfur batteries. The energy density of lithium sulfur is six times that of lithium ion with a great cost advantages. In addition, lithium sulfur also improves the safety and eco-friendliness versus the chem chemistries used in lithium ion. However, they also suffer from many challenges, including low sulfur utilization ratio, poor uh, durability and recoverability. And all of them are closely related to the nucleation and growth process of lithium sulfide during discharge. But in-depth mechanism understanding of the, this process remains unclear. First, we have reviewed that the quasi-equilibrium potential for lithium sulfide nucleation is determined by the donacity of electrolytes. With the increase of donacity, uh, the lithium ions are better solvated, getting softer to stabilize the base, uh, soft base polysulfide. Uh, thus lead to a lower initiation potential for lithium sulfide nucleation. Next, we also uh, establish a quantitative model to correlate to solvent properties. And for low donacy electrolytes, one should increase the lithium sulfide solubility for higher sulfur utilization ratio because the surface diffusion of lithium sulfide is the governing step for the 2D growth observed here. For high donacy electrolytes, on the other hand, one should reduce the viscosity of the electrolytes because the diffusion of polysulfide precursors are the governing step here for the 3D growth in high donacy electrolytes. And based on these understandings, we correlate the most, three most relevant solvent properties to so, uh, sulfur conversion efficiencies and identified a novel and more efficient solvent Propinitrile. The established methodologies has also been successfully applied in the catalyst design. We have found that when we increase the electronegativity of the nonmetal elements from boride to oxide, both lithium sulfide electrodeposition kinetics and the, the sulfur utilization ratio keep declining, which is also the trend for other metal-based catalysts in literature. 
This trend can be explained by a much stronger chemisorption of polysulfide in titanium boride compared to titanium oxide from both UVVs and XPS results. And we concluded that the electronegativity of the nonmetal elements as a critical descriptor for the catalytic efficacy in catalyst design in lithium sulfur batteries. And in summary, we have invented the first low-cost polysulfide iodide flow battery and further developed an efficient, efficient membrane strategy to achieve industrial relevant cycling stability for long duration energy storage uh, in future clean grids. And lithium sulfur batteries are uh, promising for the decarbonization of transportation. We have established a quantitative model, which is effective in guiding the re regional developments of electrolytes and for highly efficient system. And finally, I would like to acknowledge my supervisor and the, all the other group members during my research life. And that's all for my sharing and thank you for your attention. Thank you, Zhejun, for a very exciting talk. It's really uh, exciting work and I enjoy your talk. Um, we are open this, opening this talk for the questions. So the audience, if you have questions, please type in the chat box. Perhaps I can ask the first question. So in your polysulfide-based redox flow battery uh, work, you have already uh, solved this um, crossover and a water migration uh, problem and the stability has been enhanced greatly. So my question is, um, is this already close to commercialization or are there more challenges to be solved? Uh, you, are, um, you are muted. Currently, we are working on the commercialization of this system to uh, fail a pattern or uh, to do some uh, in, in improving work to, uh, to the uh, 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 fabrication of this membrane in a large scale. So I think uh, it is very close to the commercialization and considering its low cost and uh, readily applicable uh, for the future system. Yeah. That's great. So have you started talking to some companies, some uh, uh, commercial collaborators? Uh, yes, my, uh, my supervisor has uh, started a company for red flow battery. So uh, currently we are uh, co collaborate with many companies to uh, improve this work. Yeah. Right. So may I also know um, with this technology, what kind of um, um, vehicle or transportation application you are looking at, wh whether it's uh, on the road or aviation or some more futuristic applications? Well, for relo flow batteries, we uh, always use it for the grid scale application. For example, in uh, uh, large buildings and uh, some power grids. Uh, so it is not always used in your electric vehicles. I see. I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So lithium sulfur batteries are um, promote for the electric vehicles because it's right. a high energy density. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I understand. All right, so are there questions? Um, so far, I don't see questions yet. All right, so you, you, you also mentioned that you have done the techno-economic analysis. So yeah. in your techno-economic analysis, uh, what is the, the scope of this analysis? Do you start from the renewable energy all the way to the end, the storage and utilization of the electricity? Uh. The, the levelized cost of energy uh, takes the um, cost uh, from its uh, in investigation to the end of life. So uh, we do this uh, because sulfur is quite cheap, according to our opinion. So we, uh, we would like to know whether uh, this technology can compete with other commercialized uh, commercialized uh, system for uh, grid scale applications. Uh, since uh, it uh, for long duration energy storage, it need to be very cheap to co to be comparable to the pump hydro uh, or other kinds of uh, method. So this is uh, our 
um, perspective for doing this. Yeah. All right, thank you. So we have questions from the audience. So the first one is, um, I'm wondering whether the uh, about the durab durability of the lithium sulfur battery um, and the main issue to cause the degradation in the process. What's the main issue? Yeah. Uh, for lithium sulfur batteries, I think it comes from the sulfur, um, so uh, the cathode side. The sulfur can the sulfur and the lithium sulfide are two end products, but they are all uh, insulating. So many uh, dead sulfur will generate during the, your long long term cycling. So uh, for the durability, I think you should always um, uh, resolve the challenges faced by the cathode side, and uh, uh, for uh, and uh, to to. Uh, find some more efficient electrolytes and uh, the uh, electrode uh, catalysts. Yeah. All right. The next question is related. Uh, so, Dr. Lee, I would like to know the definition of the durability of battery. In other words, how do we measure and uh, compare it? Well, the durability mainly has two aspects. The first one is its uh, cycle life, so uh, which means that how many cycles it can uh, wrong over its uh, uh, total life. And the other aspects is the calendar life, which means the, uh, how long the, uh, what's the calendar time it can run over its life. So uh, these two aspects are also, are, are all very important for batteries. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for answering all the questions and it's time, time's up. Thank you. Thank so you. wish you the great success in your future work. Thank you.